our storage facility, U.S. Storage. Go to jmore.com, click the U.S. Storage banner, and you can get three months for up to 50% off. Now, that is a good business to be in. These are good people. They hey. were one of the first. They reached out to me, actually, on my website and said, we want to sponsor hey, your... that, though, is a business to be storage. in. Storage. U.S. Can't. Storage. has a lot of it. Are you kidding? It's such a brilliant business. Check this out, Gabber. $25 moving supply credit. If you uh, go and uh, click... Do you click in my name here? jmore.com. Click their banner. But here's the thing. They support CureIt.org, CureIt with a K. That's kidney research, uh, kidney cancer research. And what they do is whenever you round up to the nearest dollar, they match it. And all that money goes to kidney research for CureIt.org. And the guy that owns U.S. storage centers pays all the bureaucratic fees, all the secretaries, all the mm-hmm. desks, all the So plot. the money goes off of the research. Everything you spend to go to CureIt.org. He matches and it goes exactly. So he's made his money and he's doing all the good now. Good for him. So and now he's giving us money. U.S. storage will match it. It adds up to over a million dollars a year just rounding up to the nearest dollar. Go to U.S. storage. uh, Click the banner on jmore.com. So the next thing for you is more foiling. Well, yeah, but we have business ideas. We just started UFC. UFC. Yeah, I'll be like his chicks, you know, drying his brow and getting into fights with the girls on the side, and I'll be like, you go. What would your name well, we be? We have a nutrition company. We yeah, just, we just started we just, a supplement just, company called, called Truition. Truition. Anytime you guys want True. to cut me in on one of these, Truition. I'm right <laughs> up the street from. Well, we started it. I'm, I'm right up the street of one of your houses. <laughs> we have a. Um, uh, we're working on this project right now with these electric skateboards, which are. Oh yeah, that's really and we fun. We have a thing called Renegade Golf that we're just about ready to, to launch. Which is a what's whole, something the listeners a golf can uh, go to right now where you would see their presence, like whether it's a Twitter address, um, GabbyandLaird.com. Okay. The, and it has all those that all that free content for people to do all their workouts at home because what we what we want to do is we say we want to cure the adults and the children, you know, and help people be healthy and get healthy so also they can teach their children. G A B B Y and L A I R D. Gabby and Laird. And all that is for free and they'll see our tuition products um, on well. the site. But awesome. all the content is for free. They don't even have to sign up for anything. To float around and check the site out because I always and, hate and that. And then we're, uh, we're, I mean, we're working on a bunch of different ideas, but yeah. one of them we have this uh, pool training, uh, like a uh, aqua fitness pro, um, training. That I don't think you guys really invented a pool training, Laird. Yeah. What's that? I think people have been training in pools for a long time. Mm, not not like way. this. All right. I can promise. No, there's a certification program. It's kind of like that program. air chair and, you know, kind of like riding giant waves. There's a whole, there's always a new twist to a pretzel, so it's. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Will Rogers there, over here. I love it. He's so funny. <laughs> this is great. And so you, when you, how did you get the role in Descendants? Were you offered it by Alexander Payne? Yeah. I was not, actually. I was. I was oh, do you see that? Do you see that? I was like, uh, yes. She thought, she she thought I was. Whistle, actually, the, you to get no, off the field no, the casting <laughs> agent, um, the, some oh. ca- a casting agent said that they thought that um, I would, I could be good for the part and they presented it. And so I went and I read for... Um, it would seem like auditioning for a movie goes I, against everything you believe in. I auditioned for uh, for it. It happened to be... Uh, the audition was on Oahu. I was on Kauai. All I had to do was fly over to, oh, that's right. to Oahu. Should have taken the and, super And fair. we know... Um, <laughs> uh, I have Brought mutual friends with ice. George. Well, we have we have friends that are friends with George. And indirectly... George. We've been, Mr. Clooney. Clooney, okay. So we've been in, uh, indirectly connected to him for a while. I got him some boards for a house that he has in Europe. and uh, And so... But I, that had nothing to do with actually the part itself, and it had to do with the casting lady. And then I well, and everyone went on about how talented Al, uh, the director is. So Laird said, "Okay, I'll go." Yeah, everybody went on. It was Alexander Payne, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So everybody so. was, and and actually, I know a friend of mine is a, one of the one of the uh, like line producers. On oh the, yeah, that's on right. The, on the on the film, but still. But at the end of the day, know. you have to read to a point where they don't go like, "Wow, is this yeah. guy okay? He's yeah. really dumb." <laughs> Like you have to actually do a job where they want well, you I had to go lo- in, not lose money on no, you. No, I went and read. Yeah. Alexander. Well, and I want to say, I'll, <laughs> I, I can, I can, I can, I can tell you too that Laird was, you had a level of stress about it. Absolutely. I mean, he like going into it and knowing he was going to do it even, yeah. you know, he was, I, I, and that's, you know, that's the thing as Laird is very diligent. And so he was, I, I realized <laughs> stressed I realized out about it. Well, that, that the part was insignificant enough that if they wanted to, they could just cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> But you were <laughs> like, like I mentioned earlier about Jerry Maguire, but right. you did it in a way yeah. Yeah. that was so your guy was and yeah. I don't want to say spoiler alert. I'll try to we'll talk yeah. around this because you should have seen the Descendants. It should have won Best Picture in my opinion, and well, Clooney should have won Best it Actor. Should've, it should have won Best Picture. And the problem is, is that you had that other film that was really belongs in another category. 
That that foreign movie and silent movie? <laughs> no, I'm, no, I mean, you're saying... Two different you categories. Should, I'm just saying, but it should have been in a different category. I like you movies should. where people talk. <laughs> exactly. You know why? Because yeah. I'm not 19 fucking 12. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since that. they invent... You know why? I also like color in my television. When I walk into someone's house and it's a black and white TV, I'm like, what's wrong with these people? Yeah, yeah. Are they okay? <laughs> uh, so... The Adams Family. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. But your character... Uh, well, if you haven't seen the movie, yeah. just don't listen. We got our ads in. It's GabbyandLaird.com. Was basically driving the boat that caused the accident where Clooney's wife goes yeah. into the coma. Yeah, and he and he, he let her drive, which he wasn't supposed to. And he feels horrible about it. And you had to convey how incredibly horrible you felt. But this is what I also saw you do, Laird, and I'm giving you a compliment. And it was tough to do. You had to somehow, without the words that were given to you, convey to George Clooney how much you understood, how much he must have hated you for allowing that to happen. Yeah. And you did it, bro. Brah. You yeah. did it, brah. You did a great job. And Clooney is probably one of those guys. I've met him a bunch of times, but I never acted with him. It seems like he's a guy that once you get into the second take, like he's just extracting it from you. Absolutely. Like he looks at you with such yeah. horribly sad eyes yeah. that you're like, I feel really bad, well, dude. You know, I, 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 it's like playing tennis with a phenomenal tennis player. You, you can take a bad tennis player, but, but if the guy Not hits really, the ball right to you, though, but they if the guy hits the ball you. right to you, right. you can probably hit a decent shot. A good player can hit, and you know, if, if you're with a, in a situation, first of all, Alexander, Alexander was extremely. So um, the listeners need to know that Gabby and Laird is, keep, are adjusting each other's keep mics. pushing each other's mics <laughs> near each other's faces, but, but, but they never think to do it for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> but but Alexander uh, was so relaxed. Did he give you very specific, like, I need you to convey here how sorry you are? No. It was just written that way, and the- he, he didn't, and and it wasn't. I mean, he might have uh, he might have done that more if had I not had he felt that I wasn't had I not nailed it. Yeah, no, 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 no. I understand, but had I not done it, like had I not had I not been had I not been doing what he wanted, I think he would have definitely given me some more. Direction. How many takes did you do? Two or three. Really. Yeah. And then they put different lenses. So you got to do it again. Like even yeah. two takes. They, they fucking no, I mean, four hours. No, I'm just saying. But the way yeah. those guys were, half the time you didn't know they were shooting. Like I, when I first came in and they were shooting some other scenes, I was like, are they shooting? Because it was like, oh, we're shooting. It wasn't like, hey, quiet on set. And just like all this kind of stress that normally is seems to be around yeah. filmmaking. No stress. Like Alexander, no stress. Clooney, no stress. It was like the energy there. I mean, maybe other, other scenes at other times when stuff wasn't working. But those guys were totally stress free, and I'm like, these guys know how to make a movie. That I was go, probably my favorite movie last year. By really? far. Hey, the comfort. Do you on like that set? Do you like making movies? Yeah, it's the it's the f- most favorite thing. Really? Because you're you join a crew, like you become a pirate, and you're just out at sea for three months, and you just take over a town. You're in a neighborhood, and there's trailers, and you're in like Calgary, or you're in just some neighborhood, and there's trucks, and there's a truck with food on it. Everything. It's like being a part of an armada. And you just take over this town, and everyone's like, you can use the restroom. It's right over here. Do you need coffee? you want some breakfast? Yeah. We're not going to need you for a couple hours. You want to take a nap? And you're like, yeah, I think I'm going to take a nap now. I'm pretty tired of playing make-believe over yeah. <laughs> well, that's what George, hey, that's, you know, that's what, he, uh, that's what George said. He goes, hey, I just want to let you know. He goes, just remember, it's make-believe. Yeah. And I love that. He He's goes, really he goes you know, some people get a little serious with this stuff. They come in, like, in the character already. He goes, he goes, you know, don't don't worry about them. He gets because some people are like fanatically. I'm in the character now. Like, don't talk to me like normal. Like, and he's like, calm down now. It's just it, this is me. You were believe. really great in that movie. That movie had really great small parts, and I love that. Uh, I think that's Alexander. You were really great. Robert Forster was the best I've ever seen him because I did not like him in Jackie Brown. I thought he was bad. Like yeah. he was a real big Chicago accent. I'm Don Cherry. I'm a private. I'm like Jesus. What comic book did this guy walk out of? But I guess that's how it was written for him. And yeah. but fucking Bo Bridges got yeah. to oh, play. How's that? He got to play the dude. Yeah. He yeah. got to do his own dude. Yeah. Like Jeff Bridges <laughs> made the dude. Yeah. And then Bo was like, you know what? You're not the only guy in the family that can be the crazy guy that's a little drunk. We really like Tom. <laughs> or whatever the guy's name yeah. was. I yeah. forget the guy's yeah. name that they wanted to get the bid on the oh, land. But it's just that mind fuck scene. I don't know how else to put it where he's just kind of like, yeah, we're all relaxed. And he's like eight drinks in at the bar in the middle of the day. And like they happen to bump into each other. But to see Bo Bridges do a Lebowski turn, yeah. that was pretty far out, bro. Yeah. 
Bruh? Well, I think, I mean, I think I, I attribute all that to Alexander's, his, his, uh, his, what, you know, I mean, I guess any good director has the ability to see the whole picture, but his, Alexander's, uh, they said it took him 2,000 girls to find the, the daughter. Mm-hmm. Like the daughter. Well, it's interesting because in the beginning of the movie, I went, and she's oh, a totally oh. unknown. And then as the movie went on. I went, oh, okay. Yeah, but he's. I think he has an ability to bring out of people that aren't actors, people that bring those characters in and give them roles and make them feel natural. You know, I mean, okay. I mean, Sideways was. Listen, Sideways hurt my stomach. What do you mean? Side the movie. You laugh so hard it hurt your stomach. Absolutely. That's how I feel about Step Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> that movie made me so happy. But I'll tell you this, George Clooney got robbed of an Oscar. Someone bent him over a fucking chair and raped his ass without... You know what? I could have just gotten away with something. He got robbed out of an Oscar. No, it's okay. You like no, the way you take got, it all the got, way. He got robbed. Here's the scene where I went. I was weeping when he has to explain that the mom... And if you really, if you haven't seen... The, I hate when people go, thanks for ruining it for me. It's fucking last year, <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm sorry. Last year at the Oscars. I'm sorry your TiVo <laughs> is fucking four years back. I hate to break it to you, yeah. but Snoop dies in the wire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, whoa, I, had, I just got it. Well, then you're a fool because it's the wire. It's the best. But when he has to tell the daughter, and I am going to ruin it for you right now, yeah. so just tap out uh, if you don't want it ruined. When he has to tell the daughter that the mom has died and they cut the sound out and it's Clooney's just mouth moving and it's on Clooney's face only. Oh, no, excuse me. On her face. It's on the therapist yeah. telling the daughter <gasps> oh. that the mom has died, and Clooney is behind the therapist, so you only see the therapist's mouth moving and Clooney's reaction to his, I have goosebumps, Clooney's reaction to his, like, five-year-old, six-year-old daughter getting that news was the most powerful thing I'd seen in probably five years that I can think of. I know people will tweet like, what about that role? Yeah. Relax. That blew me away, and he was so incredible, and he's the best we got. Yeah. And it's like Meryl Streep every year. Well, they finally gave it to her for the Iron Lady, yeah. and she was great. But every year, it's like, yeah. if I was Meryl Streep, I'd be like, you know what? I'm not going to the fucking Oscars. If you guys are going to let me Shit not win over and over and over, I'm just going to send a fucking Native American up to accept for me <laughs> if I win, like Brando did. Old oh, that's school. That's right. That's right. Old school. <laughs> Gabby Reese, seven gold medals. Laird Hamilton, zero. That's right, baby. You are proud of it. Seven gold medals behind in the I have imaginary. A, I have the medals yeah. that you can't, you can't. Measure. You have gold bikinis. You don't even. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever tried the gold bikini on? Be honest. Absolutely not. Well, if, if wearing it's on your head, it counts. All right. You know, what, Laird. Let me tell you something. You know my favorite kind of. You know what my favorite bikini of your wife's is? I I, I already know. Yeah, the one on the floor. No. I like the gold one because it brought you two together. Oh, oh how you think I was going to say something creepy about your wife? Oh my! That's God. okay because then it shows that we never had an affair, right? That's right. Yeah, so it's That's okay. Right. Inappropriate, so, like, totally so fine. Get your <laughs> wife on the mouth lasciviously on the way out. You can really be rest yeah, assured. I'll, I'll feel well, there's good. obviously nothing going on between uh, yeah. these two. They're making out. I mean, is, that you, totally is, okay. that how you, is that how you make your, you feel okay about when every time somebody comes to visit and they French kiss your wife? Oh. And they're like, well, then I know they haven't had. <laughs> Can I be honest with you? I don't. I I can say honestly, probably a half dozen uh, people have actually been inside my house. <laughs> it, it, we usually do it from yeah, yeah. It, not family. I mean, we usually keep it in the front room because then, like, from the front room back is like yeah, your house, the womb. Yeah, like, we understand. No that. one's been upstairs. No one. When they you shouldn't. No, you know place. why? Because that's where I keep all the gold bikinis. Well, like, gonna, talking like nonsense. MTV Cribs, my favorite. All, every, but every single yeah. person, and this is where the magic happens. Every yeah. single time you're they get looking at like Rick bed, Ross, a fat like, guy, like, like, yeah, I'm sure that's a oh. lot of magic with some sweaty, wheezing, <laughs> obese guy on top of them. Like, yeah. you like that? This is-, <laughs> um, this is where the magic happens, right here. Wherever you two are, and I am on Morse Stories, uh, tweet us, let us know you liked it, rate and review the show uh, on iTunes. That's Morse Stories, and don't forget to get the Morse Stories app. Just type in more stories. You're serious? You have an app? Yeah, we're big time, sweetie. Wow. Big deal. We're big time. Who knew, honey? Everybody's got Who an knew, app baby? now. Maybe a thermometer has an app. <laughs> a, a thermometer. You want to try that one again? It's a thermometer app. Yeah, EKG app, EKG too. EKG app. Yeah. I like the lighter app. Lighter app? Oh, yeah. I like all, app. Uh, there's the one where you milk the cow. You just keep touching <laughs> the udders and milk fills the bucket. Oh, I mean, yeah. We yeah. gotta think we have bigger fish to fry in this world. What the hell are we doing? No, with you our need time? to get the more hours of television. Right, you we'll need to get, get the more stories app so it's on your iPad and I phone. Will. When you're on the plane, I'll you be press my too. face with your finger. Laird will like that part. <laughs> just, just be like this. me in the bing, face. Bing, 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 bing. And then it'll pull up all the episodes of more stories and you can listen to anybody that you see. I want to hear George like. Carlin's daughter. She's, it was terrific. You'll love it. 
It, we got deep too. Are we, we all, her and I always are get we super boring? Deep. No, this is great. We're not boring. No, but we're gonna end. Okay. okay. Uh, before it gets boring. Well, there's a okay. lot. Well, there's a lot more to talk about, but before it gets another boring, time, you come another back. chapter. So you need to go to gabbyandlaird.com and see get all, all your the good fresh that they info do. so you can move your booties. Move your booties. And try That's not right. to do the jogging to the Kentucky Fried. Yeah. Right? yeah, don't run on the beach. Do the jogging, just miss the Kentucky Fried. That's right. Uh, so I'm glad that you're not Gabby Zerfus. Yeah, I know, right? 